Hi, I'm Bishop Marcus Campbell. I want to share with you today my story. Can you imagine a young man, a little boy, a child, the age of five, watch his daddy rape and beat his mother, never understanding why he would do the woman that he said that he loved, that he gave his vows to, why would he treat her in such a way? Why would he take his son for trying to protect his mother at the age of five and throw him in the corner of a room, slam a door shut so he can continue to rape and beat his mother? Didn't understand why I was sent off to live with my grandmother who lived next door to the church without being able to be around my mother nor my father. Growing up without a dad was hard for me, let alone growing up without a mother to be there with me constantly was even worse. My grandmother loved me, taught me everything that she could. She got me just about everything that I wanted, but the one thing that I really wanted is something that she could never give me, and that's the love of both of my parents. Growing up, confused at the age of 12, I was selling drugs at a heroin house, snorting cocaine and smoking marijuana. All through high school, people seen me as a great student during the daytime. But at nighttime, I was robbing, kicking in doors, tying up family, robbing restaurants and gas stations. All along, nobody never knew about the double life that I lived, except for the friends that I was close to. Here I am, graduating from high school, after all that I was doing, living my double life. Got a four-year scholarship to Austin P. University, only to get put out of school within two years at the school, not taking advantage of an opportunity that most kids would have loved to have, only because of the hurt and the emptiness that I had, because I never was able to reconcile not having a father in my life, nor my mother being there for me. When the last time I saw my dad, I graduated from high school, and that was to go to his funeral. So all my life from five to the age of 18, I never seen my father, didn't even know his side of the family. I got locked up and went to the maximum security prison where I found myself getting into a gang. My life was on a spiral. When I got out of jail, I started using drugs. I was gang banging. In 1997, I died of a drug overdose on the 4th of July. Can you imagine people dragging you from the backyard to the front yard just because they didn't want the police to come in their house? But they did call the ambulance, only for me to die and be resuscitated twice on the way to the hospital. I cannot remember anything in the hospital, but I do remember waking up in my grandmother's bed. I was watching TBN. The preacher said, God loves you, no matter what you've been through no matter what you're going through now, just know God loves you more than anybody loves you. That touched my heart. I went to the church that I grew up next door to and the preacher said, God loves you. I found myself giving my life to Christ. I sung in the choir. My life drastically changed. No more gang, no more drugs. Only thing I wanted was more of God. But I still had an emptiness in my heart because I had yet not forgiven my father. But one day, my brother that I've never seen came by the church, took me to the graveyard to see my father, didn't even know where he was buried. When I got to the graveyard, I cried. Then I was able to get the forgiveness that I needed for him as well as the forgiveness that I needed for myself for the things that I had done to people because I was empty on the inside. I remember this scripture, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would fear no evil. In my life of gang banging, in my life of using drugs, in my life of doing all kind of criminal activity and not having the parents that I wanted in my life, I was in my valley of shadow of death. But one thing I learned that even though I was in a valley, that had the shadow of death. That was only a shadow because there was light there with me all the time. And that was the light of the world. Nobody but Jesus could have brought me through what I went through. 
And in order for me to make it in life, I had to forgive. And now that I have forgiven, I've had many people to come and say that we forgive you for what you have done to us. Learn how to forgive to be able to move forward. Learn how to forgive and able to be cleansed. Learn how to forgive that you may be truly delivered. Thank you for listening to my story.